So Nick, I'm not I'm not clear on. Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Echo Hawk for Seattle Town Hall for uh, the Fremont and Wallingford neighborhoods. My name is Reed. I use he, him pronouns, and I'll be the moderator for tonight. Before we get started, I want to introduce Matt Echo Hawk Hayashi and invite him to unmute and welcome us into this space. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Matt, and I just want to on behalf of our family, just do a couple of things. One, recognize all of you taking time off on like a especially challenging day. Um, at the end of the day, to spend time thinking about um, how best um, to move forward in a community. So we just really appreciate that. And the other thing we wanna um, just say is welcome to this from our family. We like to do this at the, at the head of all of these meetings. Um, and we think, you know, these times are special, so we want to give a special thing. So from all of our family, um, thank you for being here and thank you for being the kind of people that are here. And we just send our appreciation to all of you. Mahalo. Thank you so much, Matt, for that lovely welcome. So the agenda for tonight's town hall will consist of the following items. First, we'll hear a bit from Colleen about her background and why she's running for mayor. And then we'll have an open Q&A session where we encourage your active participation. Tonight is an opportunity for you all to get to speak with Colleen and ask her questions, as well as share your thoughts about what your neighborhood needs. I'll go over all the ways to submit questions shortly, but first, let's hear a bit from Colleen. Well, thank you so much, Reed. It's so lovely to see your face tonight on such a beautiful evening here in Seattle. Also wanna say thank you to my wonderful husband, Matt, for offering us the welcome. Uh, that is something that's a big part of the way that our family works and the way that we do, that way that we live in the native community is to um, honor each other and honor the spaces that we're coming into. So thank you, Matt, for being, um, uh, just jumping into this and doing it tonight. We appreciate it so much. And also huge thanks to Nick, who is also volunteering tonight. Um, so grateful for all of your participation and support of this um, really important campaign that we're all involved in. Um, I want to thank everyone who's here tonight as well. Those of you who are watching on Facebook and YouTube, we're grateful for you stepping in tonight. Um, it certainly has been some, a historic couple of days here in Seattle. We have reached temperatures um, that we have never uh, anticipated or thought of here in Washington State. Yesterday or in Seattle, yesterday was really unbelievable and I'm so glad we made it through um, and I'm grateful that we have um, time to talk about it today. Um, climate justice is certainly, certainly something that we must take seriously. It's part of the reason that I'm running for mayor. We've had many policies in the city that have, have failed our communities over and over again. And we have to have um, true leadership. We have to have courageous leadership in order to make the shifts we need to make and, and make those changes so that we can truly um, be a, a, a city that leads around the country, around the world, around climate justice. So um, that is an important thing to start off with today. I hope that everyone is hydrated. Um, that you're as cool as you possibly can be. It's still pretty warm out there. And that your loved ones and your pets are doing okay. We, um, I know that my 10-month-old uh, puppy is feeling um, really stir crazy. So hopefully when the sun gets a little, goes down a little bit, we're going to go out and take her out for a walk. But um, it's important to prioritize your health and your hydration and ensure that, um, that, you're, that everyone is doing okay. So um, I want to just tell you a little bit about why I'm running for mayor. I am running for mayor because this is a time for transformational change. We have all gone through some difficult times recently. We had four years of Trump and then we had, uh, you know, what, 16, 17 months of COVID. That was so hard and so scary. And figuring out how the city moves forward, it is so important. And I'm so grateful for your time. 
I'm going to tell you a little bit about my, about my background. I was born and raised in a little, um, Delta, a little town called Delta Junction in rural Alaska with seven siblings. Um, I grew up in a, a small business. My family ran a motel and I grew up cleaning rooms and working the front desk. I also had some role models in my life that I, that I looked up to. Um, my uncle uh, John started the Native American Rights Fund about 50 years ago. My uncle Larry was a Democratic Attorney General of Idaho. And I'm so proud to be the adopted granddaughter of Katie John of Mentasta Lake. I was able to grow up um, with her and see her 30 year legal battle for subsistence fishing and hunting rights. She fought it for over 30 years and she won in a landmark decision. And now every year in May, the state of Alaska celebrates Katie John Day. The reason I'm sharing this with you is that I want you to know that I am no stranger to tough fights. I wanna tell you why I'm stepping forward to run for mayor. I am running for mayor because right now, Seattle has some huge challenges, but we have the potential to turn it around and get it right. And while we confront many problems, <laughs> we have a lot of them, police accountability, how we recover from COVID, and the urgency of climate change. I believe the crisis we have to immediately tackle is the crisis, the humanitarian crisis of homelessness. You know, the election this year will be on November 2nd. It'll be six years ago to the day um, I'm sorry, um, yeah, six years ago to the day, um, we had declared a state of emergency in this city, a state of emergency around homelessness. I can remember it so clearly, watching it on King 5 and seeing our mayor and our executive and council members standing together saying, this crisis has gone on far too long and we are, state, we are declaring a state of emergency. But it was like they pulled the fire alarm, but didn't send the fire trucks. And since then, there's been so much finger pointing and infighting. And sadly, more and more of our community, our neighbors are sleeping on the streets than ever before. We have to do something. It is time for our city to change. The status quo is not working for anyone. And it sure as heck is not working for those three to 4,000 people. Three to 4,000 people sleeping outside tonight. I know for the past couple of days, my heart has been heavy thinking about my friends and my neighbors who are experiencing homelessness in this heat and knowing that there are very few places for them to go. So what do we do? Day one of an Echo Hawk administration starts with an emergency housing program. The goal is actually pretty simple. We find warm and dry and safe places for everyone to sleep at night. That means an all of the above approach, more shelter space, hotel rooms, tiny houses, RV campgrounds, and other community led solutions. It has made zero sense to me to move people around in encampments, moving people from one neighborhood to the next and not actually solving the problem. It is time for us to take emergency action. I want to invite you to take a look at our website where we talk about a 22 point plan to bring everyone who's outside inside in 14 months. So how do we do it? How do we succeed where there has been so much failure? First, we have to put the past behind us. No enemies and no grudges. We start fresh and we treat this like the emergency it is. After the election, I'll use the transition period to bring all parts of our community together, government, business, higher ed, the philanthropic community, and residents and neighbors. We all live in Seattle, and we're in this together. The day I get sworn, the day I get sworn in, we'll hit the ground running with a plan. This will be my top priority as mayor, and I believe my life experiences have uniquely prepared me to meet this moment in our city's history. This will, um, seven years ago, I became the head of Chief Seattle Club. Um, Chi Saddle Club is an amazing org organization. We serve Native people who are experiencing homelessness. We feed people, operate a day shelter, and provide ways to reconnect with tribal culture and identity. In the last few years, we started to build housing, and we've had some real successes. We're opening 80 studio units this October and another 125 units next June. I've also worked with local governments to put surplus trailers on an unused parking lots in Soto. It's called Eagle Village. It's a success and shows what can happen when we think creatively and we work together. It is time for us to make the changes that we need to make, that we know how to make. I have been really successful at housing people. I've been doing really hard things for a really long, really long time. I can continue to grind out these limited victories, or I can do something else that's hard, run for mayor and take the strategies we know that work to City Hall and make generational change. 
I am doing this work because we can make a difference. I want everyone on this call to have a lot of hope around our homeless community. We can solve this crisis. It will take leadership. It will take expertise, someone who knows what they're doing and has been doing this work for a long time. Um, you know, what is important for me is to be a transformational leader. And that starts with listening to people. That's what I'm doing in this campaign. We're holding virtual town halls in 40 neighborhoods from Bitter Lake to Rainier Beach, from Lake City to Delridge. Tonight, Wallingford, Fremont area. I lived in Wallingford for about a year one time, a beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. I'm talking to people all over this neighborhood and we're hearing the same thing, that people are frustrated and they want change. You know, I thought um, when I decided to run for mayor, I called many elders. I, as part of my tradition is to talk to the elders in my community. And one of them was my uncle Fred John. He said, Colleen, I want you to know that there is no word in the Athabascan language for leader. In our language, the word for leader is servant because the leader is a person who serves everyone in the tribe. It's their job to make sure that the young people and the old people and the sick people are taken care of. I am running to be that new generation of leadership for my beautiful, beautiful community that I love, that I appreciate, that I believe in. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Part of this town hall is that it should be discussion. If you have ideas or thoughts, things you wanna share, innovation that, wants, that you think should be heard, we're here to hear it tonight. And that is how I will be as a mayor as well. I think that this community has a lot to say and hasn't been heard. I look forward to being that mayor that hears our community, that innovates, that creates, that is entrepreneurial and takes care of some of the biggest crises that we have in the city. So thank you so much. And I will pass it back to Reed. Thank you, Colleen. So now we're going to shift to the, the question and answer portion of our program. There are many ways to share your thoughts and questions with our team, and we'll try to get through as many questions as possible tonight. If you've joined us on Zoom, please raise your hand so we can call on you. You can find the raise hand button under reactions in your bottom Zoom toolbar. If you'd prefer to type your question, you can enter it into the chat. For those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube, we have volunteers monitoring those comment sections for questions. And if you prefer to tweet, please use the hashtag Echohawk Town Hall. So um, to kick off our questions and answers, um, I would like to ask a question that we received via email. Um, Steve asked, do you support a federal tax on carbon with revenue returned to households to offset increased energy prices? Would you endorse such a policy? I know this is a federal question, but it is important to me that we have support for such policies on a local level, since we will need to solve the climate crisis on a national and international level. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for the question. And, you know, um, I, I'm going to admit to you, I'm not super familiar with that policy. It's something that I want to discover and, and um, you know, understand before I say yes or no. However, I will tell you that I am committed to do everything that we possibly can to solve this crisis that is looming ahead of us. It's not even looming. It's here. I, I, can, I, I got up at like uh, 3 a.m. to let the dog out last night and I opened the door and I thought to myself, I have never smelled Seattle like this. It smelled hot, for lack of a better word. And so um, the climate crisis is truly um, something that we have to take more seriously in Seattle. Do you know that every year in Seattle, our carbon emissions go up? despite having policy after policy after policy that declares that we are going to be a city that takes the climate crisis seriously. Um, I have been a change maker my whole career. I have stood up against, um, you know, community, um, sorry, I've stood up against um, the, the forces that are saying, no, 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 we have to do it this way, but I will make the right decision and the right, de and the decisions that will be guiding me and leading me are the ones that will lead us towards reducing our carbon emissions to ensuring that we are swerving away from the cliff that we are headed towards. Um, you know, one of the ways that I like to describe my commitment to climate change is that we know or sorry, climate justice. We know, we will know that we are headed in the right direction when our Salish Sea is full of orcas. 
because then we will know that the salmon is running and that the water is clean and abundant. And then we'll know that that, that child in the South End who has been struggling with, um, uh, you know, asthma, high, high rates of asthma because of the dirty air in the South End, that that kid can breathe easy and is, and is not in and out of the hospital with asthma attacks. That is one, some indications of where we should be headed. And I will be um, looking for, uh, creative ideas. Um, I'll be looking for new policies, some that I'm not familiar with. And that one sounds super intriguing and interesting because part of what we have to do is one, we have to inspire our community. We have to help them understand how possible it is, how exciting it is. And two, we have to make it um, uh, uh, more equitable and more accessible for our community. And so I will be so excited to think more about your, the policy you recommended, which is, Reed, what is the policy name again? I don't know if you changed screen, sorry. And you're muted, sorry. Uh, federal tax on carbon. Federal tax on carbon. Yeah, um, we will look into that and um, update further. You can check out our Twitter or um, if you send us an email, we'll respond to that email. So thank you so much for the question. Um, my um, commitment to climate justice runs deep. And um, I, I invite you to um, check out our website, check out our climate justice policies and know that I'm your mayor if you wanna see change in, in the climate community. Thanks very much, Colleen. So uh, we have another question. Um, the homelessness crisis, of course, is on the is in the in the front of everybody's minds, and and it's very confusing, and seems like it's going to be extremely expensive and difficult to address. And now we have Compassion Seattle, which is just seems like it might be confusing matters. Uh, wh what do you think is the best approach that we can take to homelessness in mm -hmm. Seattle? Yeah. Well, I think the best approach, the best bet Seattle has is to elect me. You know, I um, have been um, working in this field now for um, over seven years. I'm very honored to be a national expert. I am on the National Low Income Housing Coalition Board. I am, uh, I am the founder of the National Coalition to End Urban Indigenous Homelessness. I consult with uh, national organizations, including the Interagency Council on Homelessness, which reports directly to the White House. So I am I'm very honored to serve our homeless community and to build housing for them. I'm the only candidate in this race that, that is actually an expert on this and has been building housing. Um, and I can tell you that it's not rocket science what we need to do. Housing first works. We have to be laser focused on building the housing that we truly need to get um, everyone inside. Um, there is um, so much housing um, issues ahead of us, not just for the homeless community, but also around affordability in this in the city. I believe that working families should afford to live in the city. I believe that people who um, are driving our buses and who are teachers and police officers they de deserve to live here. We are quickly. We are heading in the direction where you are only you can only afford to you can you can be the a millionaire or someone living in a tent. That is not the kind of city that we want to be. So I will be um, continuing to push building housing, building housing as mayor of the city. And then, and then and we, you, you've heard a little bit about my 14, I'm sorry, my uh, 22 point plan to bring everyone inside in 14 months. This is ambitious, I'm gonna be honest, it's ambitious, but it is doable. The plan came together with experts around homelessness and we will use every possible means in front of us. Like could be, you know, churches, it could be, you know, setting up pallet homes and parking lots. You can set up, you know, a hundred pallet homes in a day. Like, let's get busy. We are going to hustle and get the work done. Part of what I like about our plan, too, is that we can involve the community. You know, we have an, um, an idea of a volunteer corps. The work of this volunteer corps is to bring together our community who wants to do something for our homeless community. Something we hear over and over again in these town halls and we're out talking to voters is that, you know, what's so frustrating about the, about our about the homeless community and people, you know, living in parks is that, I, as a, as a citizen of the city, as a resident of the city, want to do something for them. But there's 
no plan. There's no leadership. There's no where to look to actually know what the right thing is to do for our homeless community. So our volunteer corps will get to we'll get to do the right thing. It'll be very clear what, what you can be doing and how you can be participating on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think that this is a, a city that that wants to, to give back. And we're gonna be able to, when, you, when you're doing something good for the community, it feels amazing. And so I'm excited to bring everyone in to do that. The other thing as mayor, I already covered this a little bit. It's like, I will be a good communicator about what's going on. There'll be no, you know, behind the curtain moments because everyone will know what our, what we are doing, what our intentions are, where we are heading so that, that people are not surprised or, or stressed or worried. Everyone will know what the plan is. And, and, and I, I could keep going. I want to invite you to check out um, the website. But the, the other thing I'll mention is that we have to work with the Regional Homeless Authority. This is a regional issue. Right now, um, we have, um, you know, many, many folks in our city who became homeless in, you know, Bellevue or homeless in Shoreline. And then because there's not resources there, they come into Seattle and we have, we have to find ways to approach this with a regional approach. Um, I have been very um, honored to work with some of the folks in the regional um, uh, with, within the region. I've worked with the, you know, the mayor of Auburn and, uh, and Bellevue and different community members who are supporting the homeless community in these different um, towns and cities around us. Um, I share that with you because um, I want everyone to know that I have the, ex the expertise and the partnerships to help push this forward on the regional level. Um, and so we, we can't lose sight that this is a regional um, issue and we need to be working with um, the regional homeless authority making sure that our policies are in line, that we are all on the same page as we move forward. Um, I guess I'm going to end with saying that I want everyone to know that for me, these are not numbers or data points. These are human beings who deserve to have housing. I believe that housing is a human right. These are human beings who deserve to know that they're okay, that they are loved, that they are not, um, that we're not looking down on them because of their homelessness. You know, I um, was, have this uh, really, I'll never forget this one time that I was walking into the Chi Seattle Club and I saw um, a, a, an individual, a member of the Chi Seattle Club, and he was standing outside and stepping up and down, up and down off the sidewalk. And I stopped to say, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I'm exercising. And I said, oh, great. And, and he said to me, Colleen, do you know I hear voices? And I said, yes, I know you hear voices. So this, this, um, this wonderful human being had a, a, a mental concern, you know, so, so severely that he heard voices telling him to do things and made him um, so afraid. He lived in so much fear and paranoia. And so he said to me, do you, do you know I hear those voices? I said, yeah, I do. And I said, you know, it's okay. I said, we love you. We understand what you're going through. And he started to cry. And he said, I am so sorry. And what he was saying sorry for was all of those times he had caused us a lot of troubles where he had, um, you know, been so agitated that he just dis disrupted things around him. And I'd like to share that story to remind our community that we are, we have people in our homeless community and other, and other parts of our city who are in mental anguish and our system has failed them. And as mayor of the city, I will not stand back and just wait for the state to do something or for the county to do something. We will be active and we will move and we will hustle. I mentioned that word earlier, that's my word of the day. And we will, we will innovate to find solutions so that a, a person like I'm mentioning or, um, who, who has experienced that schizophrenia can get into comfort and stability and, and not living in constant fear um, for his life. And, and that's the kind of mayor I will be. I will be one that, that sees the issues, takes it head on, and doesn't, doesn't sit back and wait for something else to happen. So um, I could talk about homelessness for a long time. So thank you Reed, very much for bringing that one forward and for um, the person that asked the question. Um, this is the biggest issue in our city and I am the best bet we have to solve this crisis. Thanks very much, Colleen. So our next question, Tony Monroe asks, 
How will you engage and encourage the support of city council members to stop the infighting and come together for the interests of the city? Tony, that's the million dollar question. Um, everyone asks this question because I think that what we have seen from City Hall is a, so much uh, disruption, um, lack of partnership, and then lack of getting something done. I think that one of the things that I have been blessed with from, my, from the creator and by my ancestors is the ability to bring people together. I'm not only a builder of buildings, but I'm a builder of relationships. And I believe that um, I will have the skills to bring together the city council um, and, and, and get us on the same page so that we can move things forward and get the work that's done that's needed in the city. I'm very privileged to have worked with all of those council members in the past on policy. Um, I've sat on panels with them. I have gone to their offices and talked to them previous to COVID and know all of them and, and appreciate them and want to um, work with them. I think that we need to create an agenda together um, so that we can um, get the work done um, that we need to get done. I want to share with you a quick example of um, something I'm, I'm really proud of um, that came to me from um, um, a friend who I, who I worked with. When he, he heard I was running for mayor, he wrote a really beautiful tribute about um, working together on the All Home Coordinating Board. The All Home Coordinating Board was the entity uh, prior to the Regional Homeless Authority. And it was my job as co-chair to help us get to some, some really um, important next steps and get the Regional Homeless Authority up and running. And um, let me tell you, it was fraught with issues. <laughs> There was like, you know, we had to, I had to get Auburn to agree and Renton to agree and Bellevue and Seattle and Shoreline and try to find ways, you know, for us to, to figure it out together. And my friend wrote a really wonderful tribute about just my ability to get us through some tough discussion and get us to get on the same page and get the Regional Homeless Authority up and running. And so um, I just shared that as an example of my ability to work with people who I don't always agree with. I have done that over and over and over again in my career. And then my job in that space is to lift up equity and to lift up justice and to help invite us into the story that we're creating together. And I've been very successful that in the past. I think I can do the same thing with the city council. I want to do the same thing with the city council. I um, I, I just have, uh, you know, a lot of... of a vision for where we could be as a community. If the council and the mayor can work together, can put aside um, the past. You know, I said that earlier in my um, little speech is that we need to like let the past be in the past and move forward with vision and clarity and solve for the humanitarian crisis that is that is harming our community um, right as we speak. So thank you very much for the question is brought up at almost, I think what we've done like close to 30 town halls now, every single town hall except for one. I remember there was one that we didn't, that question wasn't brought up, but we, um, we hear it loud and clear from our community, from this, the, this, the people that live in the city. They want the city council and the mayor to work together because some of these problems that are ahead of us are so big and we need to make sure that we, we can be cohesive and partner together and get the work done. So thank you for the question. Thanks Colleen very much for your answer. So Chris Champagne asks, Given the limitations on graduated tax schemes imposed by the state constitution, do you have ideas on how to progressively raise new city tax revenue in order to fund the costs of seriously addressing homelessness? Yeah, super important question. Um, we know that our system, our state system, is regressive. It doesn't allow us to, um, to, to have progressive taxes that we absolutely need. So the number one question, our number one answer is I'll be um, using um, or working with our Office of Intergovernment Affairs to be, um, you know, petition, working with other um, community, other cities um, to be thinking about ways that we can change our state constitution. Like it has to change. I, I don't see any way around it. And I, I don't want to, um, act like that, that we can do much without it. So that's, that's the first thing. And then two, we are looking at, 
you know, um, a capital gains tax or an unearned income tax so that it, it should only impact, you know, folks who are very, very, very wealthy um, and are, you know, selling off stocks and bonds or, or, or whatever they might be doing. So, so that is um, something that we have been working on um, with our team uh, is something that is doable, is something that um, falls within um, the, the, the constitution of the state of Washington and make sure that we, um, we do it in the right way. Um, the other thing is that when we when we get started, we should have jumpstart tax, right? The um, uh, I think it's 128 million to immediately start working through this this crisis ahead of us um, around homelessness. Uh, it's possible that the Chamber of Commerce, who already you know pushed out a lawsuit against jumpstart tax, it's possible that they'll appeal, and then we'll have to deal that if you know if that comes across. I will if I was mayor right now. I will be talking to the Chamber of Commerce and, and, and urging them and working out some kind of deal where they would not um, appeal the jumpstart tax. It is um, important that we have it to get it done, to get the work done. Um, and, then, and then I also talk about in our 22 point plan to bring everyone inside um, in 14 months about a capital campaign. Um, I use the word capital campaign because um, that's something that I have done um, for the past um, several years is um, run campaigns to help build buildings. Um, so I think that there, I know that there are individuals, there's a philanthropic community, there's higher ed, there are other um, groups in the city who want to give back to our homeless community. And I will invite them to um, do that through this, through what we're calling a capital campaign. Um, it is a tough one. Let's be honest. And, you know, the other thing is that um, as mayor, I get to control the budget. <laughs> and so um, we will be looking at prioritizing more money towards solving this crisis of homelessness. And um, that's going to be a difficult process. Um, but I can tell you um, that I have done much more difficult things than that before. And I will make those hard decisions um, and, and prioritize the human beings who are outside on the streets tonight. So thank you for the, the most difficult question of the night. <laughs> That's a hard one, um, and it's difficult because of the regressive tax uh, laws on, on the books of the state of Washington, but we've got to find a way to innovate around it and, and get this work done. Thanks, Colleen, very much. So uh, so I'm, I'm going to take the rights of the moderator and ask a question that is, is uh, right. central to me. I, uh, I've just noticed that um, in so many areas of the city, COVID uh, has caused small businesses to take a big hit and, and uh, downtown areas and, and other business areas in other parts of the city, because I've been going all over the city uh, doing stuff for the campaign. It, it, what, are, what are your plans for revitalizing those business areas? Well, thank you, Reed, for the question. And um, I mentioned earlier that I grew up in small business and I have very clear memories of going out to clean a hotel room and walking into just a disaster. And the, of course, this is in like the late 80s, early 90s and running to go get my grandma and saying, look what happened. And in those you know, times, there was no easy way to you know, find somebody or hold their credit card and charge them, especially in, in the middle of rural Alaska. And I can just see the look on her face when we looked at you know, thousands of dollars of damage um, and, and, and feel um, so, uh, I understand what our small business community is going through right now. I also happen to own a small business right now. Um, I own a, a consulting company with my husband and um, we recognize that this has just been an incredibly hard time for our small business community. It's important to remember that small businesses um, are a big part of our economic engine and they have a lifeblood of neighborhoods. Our neighborhoods are such, we have such amazing neighborhoods with such amazing small businesses in them. And in order to really recover from the pandemic equitably, we need our small business community to flourish. So as mayor, I will commit to putting the full force of the Office of Economic Development behind supporting all of our small businesses. The reality is, is that the Office of Economic Development needs more money, <laughs> at least for the next year or two, specifically for small business. As mayor, I will have a dedicated person in the mayor's office to help coordinate all city departments with neighborhood business districts to streamline all the levers and actions that city departments can use to help, like permitting, street closures for festivals and farmers market and other activities 
that bring people around your business. I want um, the city of Seattle to be the easiest place in the country to do business. And so there's some things that we're going to need to change. There's going to be intersections that different city departments are going to get to um, to, to play together and find great solutions to, to ensuring that the city of Seattle is known um, as a place, a good place to do business. Um, we also want to hear from you all. That's We're going to be holding a series of town halls with neighborhood business districts to see what the city can do. Um, you know, I know that we can be activating more parks and side streets and alleys to arts, culture, and restaurants to get more foot traffic into um, our places of business. This is not the time for the mayor's office of the city of Seattle to step back. This is a time for us to step up and to be asking direction from our small businesses about what they need and, and really follow through with it. Um, I wanna mention quickly that about downtown. So I absolutely, you know, small businesses in the neighborhoods, wonderful, we need that. We will be supporting that. We also know that there are small businesses in downtown and downtown is a treasure. I fell in love with Seattle because of downtown. And we must guard the treasure carefully. So one of the ways that we can support our small businesses in downtown and in the neighborhoods is to solve for homelessness. You know, I know because, you know, I work with some of my um, beloved um, homeless community that because of their trauma, because of um, their lack of resources and money and, and they're in survival mode, that sometimes they can be harmful to small business. Sometimes they can hurt a small business. We have to solve the crisis of homelessness if our city is going to come back and thrive and, and become an, an, an equitable and just city. So um, this is exciting, exciting work ahead of us. Um, it gets me, um, it really gets my blood pumping to think about the ways that we could be um, ensuring that our small business community um, gets back on their feet and, and, and comes back even stronger. So thank you for the question, Reed. It is incredibly important. And um, I look forward to being the mayor that is a great ambassador for this city. Thanks, Colleen. Great answer. Um, so I think we have time for one more question. And uh, the one that I have here is uh, the relationship between the city leadership and the police department seems to, if anything, be deteriorating. Mm -hmm. And so I'm uh, the, the questioner is wondering what what uh, your plans are for revitalizing that relationship yeah. and uh, making the, the police department uh, more functional than it is now. Yeah. Well, I invite you to check out our website where we talk about our, all of our plans around police reform and about um, public safety. But one of the, the things that I'll share with you is that we talk about new culture, new contract, new chief. And um, we have one of the most important things that the mayor will do when hired is, or when elected, is to hire a new chief of police. Um, I can tell you that our past um, attempts of hiring a chief of police has, we struggled <laughs> and we haven't had enough community led um, uh, leadership in that space. So as, as leader of the city, I would ask for um, more participation from our civilian community, the communities that have been working around police reform. I would ask for a co-chair that would be selected from the community police commission by the community police commission um, and ensure that they are um, leading the efforts to um, hire the next chief of police. I would also ask them to be a part of, um, you know, evaluating that chief of police and, and making sure that we're, and the, and the chief of police candidates, making sure that we are, are clear about what a chief of police should be doing. And I can tell you that the litmus, the litmus, litmus test for me for a chief of police will be a, 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 um, a chief of police that is not afraid to discipline officers. Right now, we have this arbitration process that is that we are legally bound to. And what can happen is that a chief can discipline um, a, an officer who's been doing you know, harmful things to the community and discipline them and then fire them. The arbitration process allows for that officer to appeal that firing and they can, um, the arbitration board can then come back to um, the chief of police and say, sorry, you have to keep this person on your, on your, in your department. Um, 
we will be asking our chief of police to not allow any bad cops on the street. So if they, ha they have a cop that comes back, they're going to ask that cop to never interact with the public. That cop will sit behind a desk and we will not have bad cops on the streets of Seattle. And, and as far as the relationship goes, I think that the, the chief is key. And then we need to build out the new culture. We need to tell our officers, this is what we expect from you, that you are all community-based officers. You are all the officers that are out on the streets supporting and protecting the community. You are, you are there um, to, to be just like I will be, to be a servant leader in that space as an officer. And so that is going to require you know, incredible leadership from me as mayor and from um, our chief of police. And then... Um, you know, we have a new contract that we get to continue to negotiate. Um, I can assure you that as mayor of the city, we will uh, we will be um, we'll work um, as hard as we can and not allow for a contract to go by that allows for um, things that happen like over this past summer. You know, we had officers that were kind of just doing whatever they want. They could roll a bicycle over someone's head. They tear gassed children. We have to change those, um, we have to change the contract. So those kinds of actions are not allowed in our community. Um, and so um, I wanna swing back to your, what your question was about building those relationships out between the community and between um, the police officers. I think it has to be done with a lot of caution. I think that there's a tremendous amount of trauma that's out there in the community and we need to be aware of that. But we also can't let we can't let that stop us. Um, again, I think that one of the things that I have been, um, that I can bring to this space is the willingness to um, listen, the willingness to partner, and the willingness um, to, and, and the vision to create this new culture that we will need in the Seattle Police Department. Um, it's something I'm excited about doing and um, know that this is the time for the kind of transformational and bold leadership we will need to transform our police department. So thank you for the question. Thank you very much, Colleen. And, and we have reached the uh, end of our time for, for questions. And uh, if we haven't gotten to your question or if you have additional comments or questions for Colleen, please feel free to email the campaign at any time at info at echohawkforseattle.com and someone from the campaign will reach out to you. Our volunteers will also post that email in the comments for you. Since we're near the end of our time together, Colleen, do you have any final words? I just want to say thank you to you all, to Reed and Nick, and for everyone who's here on the Zoom. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being interested in our in this campaign. Please send us any kind of questions that you might have. Um, this is and, and ideas. I'm looking for ideas and innovation. And we, um, as a city, are are an incredible, inventive, and entrepreneurial city. So let's get out there and do it. I hope everyone has a wonderful night. That you enjoy this um, weather that is um, cooling down, and know how. Um, uh, how honored I am that you were here with us tonight. So thank you so much. Thanks so much, Colleen. So our next Echo Hawk Town Hall is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. And we hope to see you there. Good night, everyone. Thanks for being here.